So you want to change the world for animals, but you're not sure how, or if it's even possible. I've been there, but then I joined Direct Action Everywhere, a network of ordinary people committed to changing the world for animals. DFC has reviewed movement history and put the latest social science research into action to great success. And what we've found is that change is not only possible, it's inevitable if we follow the right steps. In her groundbreaking research, Erica Chenoweth, a political scientist at Harvard, found that societies are permanently transformed when just 3.5% of the population actively commits to nonviolent resistance. But 3.5% isn't a minimum, it's a maximum. Many times, it took even less. From women's suffrage to gay marriage, civil rights to Black Lives Matter, major change happens when a tiny fraction of the population takes sustained nonviolent direct action. Direct Action Everywhere is creating that 3.5% for animal rights, and we want you to be a part of it. Together, we can achieve animal liberation within our lifetimes. How? By exposing animal abusing industries, rescuing the animals, and elevating their stories everywhere we can. The animal rights movement has a long history of undercover investigations, of factory farms, slaughterhouses, fur farms, animal testing labs, puppy mills, and other places where animals are abused. For decades, these animal exploiting industries have used their money and political connections to pass laws that criminalize these investigations. We think these laws are unjust and that it is our moral obligation to challenge injustice and help these animals whenever they're being abused. So in the spirit of nonviolence, we put liberation into action through open rescue. Open rescue means we walk into these facilities, sometimes in the middle of the night, sometimes in broad daylight, and document the conditions inside. When we find sick and injured animals, which we always do, we take them out, get them medical care, and bring them to sanctuaries. When we execute these investigations and rescues, we don't hide who we are, and we film ourselves the entire time. Then we publicize our footage, along with our full names. Unlike animal abusing industries, we have nothing to hide. The idea is to demonstrate that what we're doing is not criminal. What's happening to animals is the true crime. And that's why we're not afraid to challenge these laws in court. Naturally, big animal exploiters like Smithfield and Purdue hate the negative publicity we generate from our investigations. So they're prosecuting us in court. Some DXC investigators have faced multiple felony charges that amount to decades in prison. Nobody wants to get locked up, but these whistleblowers welcome the prosecutions because the courtroom is another place to put the issue on the table for the world to see. So we support our fellow activists by showing up at their trials and spreading the word through social media and the press. And we push lawmakers to support the right to rescue animals from situations of distress and exploitation as a first step on the way to an animal bill of rights. Like most effective social movements, DXC works both inside and outside of the system to create change for animals. Even while we confront big ag and its enablers in government through nonviolent civil disobedience, we also work with legislators to craft bills and help get them passed. In 2019, DXC was instrumental in passing California's statewide ban on fur after spearheading the fur bans in Berkeley and San Francisco. And today, we're pushing these progressive cities to lead the way again by divesting city funds from animal agriculture. We know that change starts locally, and what happens in one, two, or three cities can accelerate change across the world. But for that to happen, we need a lot of activists in one place. The only way we're able to do all this stuff is by having a strong, close community of activists. While we look out for animals, we also look out for each other. DXC has social events almost every day, whether through small affinity groups we call circles or through social media chats and online discussions. We also founded the first animal rights center in the country and inspired people to open similar community centers around the world. It's through the strength of community that we're able to support each other, learn from each other, and hold each other accountable. None of our work is possible without community. What this all amounts to is the capacity to create revolutionary social and political change for animals, shutting down the industries that exploit them and enshrining their rights in law. It's not gonna happen overnight. It's going to take years, decades. 
But animal liberation is going to happen within our lifetimes. And if you want to be part of that change, we're here to help you be the most effective activist you can be.